In a recent video, I was talking about using a mobile phone dongle to get your internet for a hotspot. And I've also been asked about uh, ENG or electronic news gathering and some of the technology that's similar used in electronic news gathering. Now, back in the day when I worked in broadcast news, we used to have big trucks that uh, had 2.5 gigahertz microwaves and that was how we got our signal into the networks. Also, this was uh, one of the uh, car races we have in Australia. This was a receive site to receive pictures from a helicopter, again on 2.5 gigahertz. And there's quite a lot there. There's a bit of scaffolding involved and a uh, panning and tilting a tripod to actually track the helicopter literally by signal strength or by the uh, the picture. And that was on the analog days. And now we, we have the uh, digital... Uh, transmission on uh, the back of the cameras, that big pole there, that's actually just a uh, omnidirectional uh, 2.6 gigahertz digital transmitter that we uh, used on a, uh, on a live cross in a hangar at Sydney Airport. And back in the day, we used to carry all this edit gear around, hundreds of kilos of stuff, and now it's just simply uh, down to nothing. Now, some of the other transmission stuff, uh, this is a microwave Yagi, or there's actually two Yagis there that actually get GPS locked to the receiver and always point at the receiver. So that's one of the uh, methods of getting uh, the 2.6 gigahertz out of a helicopter. Uh, this one's a receive or a repeater, using the helicopter as a repeater from the uh, sailing boat down below. And uh, there's a little uh, drop-down antenna. There it is there on a different type of helicopter, but effectively the uh, antenna, the cone type antenna there just swings up and down depending whether you're up in the air or landing. When you're landing, you swing it back up. And that's simply a repeater. This one here is a, just another one. And that one's actually a steerable uh, inside that cone at the bottom. There's actually a steerable... Uh, antenna that you can actually steer towards the receive site and there it is there on the bottom of uh, you can just see it there next to the camera uh, this is some other microwave gear uh, one of the stadiums we have in Melbourne called the MCG putting up a uh, up on top of the roof there with all the scaffold and the riggers gear I've got on uh, and putting up some antennas there to receive the helicopter pictures and then in some of the well, recent times, they still use these trucks to get the signal out. This was for a uh, soccer, for a football match, and this is a whole setup of uh, satellite transmission. A uh, guy has this in the back of his ute, uh, very elaborate setup. And in more recent times, uh, this is probably about 10 years ago, uh, I was doing a an election coverage, and you can see all the little modem dongles there. There's quite a few of them, and they all get bonded together. Now, that's, uh, yeah, like I say, about 10 years old, but now we've come into these smaller packs, which are tiny. This is one by the ABC, the national broadcaster I was using to do a live cross there, and this is simply the same thing that I have myself just to do a, uh, a live cross or to send pictures in, and it's bonded so what bonded means is usually uh, getting several different internet sources. We, and I use different carriers, so that way you're actually, uh, uh, if you're closer to a, a, a different telecom network, uh, it, you can use the, the signal from different telecom networks and it gets uh, sent back in a cloud and then it gets re rebonded back at the other end. Now this is also for doing YouTube or even just conferences. This is a different type of pack I have just for doing YouTube. And that's the pack itself. It's quite small, it's quite quite, quite compact. Uh, there's not much to it. It is to the two dongles on the top. There's actually two SIM cards inside. So that, this one actually uses four connections plus you can have an ethernet and a wi-fi as well so it'll do with six connections and get that uh, signal bonded and effectively all it is is an sdi 
connection, just a BNC connector, and you just take the BNC connector or the connection out of a camera, out of a source, and that will do both audio and the video in that one connection. Uh, it's very simple to use. Just turn it on and away you go. You know, call up the other end and uh, they get recording or, or put it to air live. There are other things involved in terms of getting return audio, which is a whole different set of things. Uh, that can either be done in this unit. It actually has a, f a function to be able to get the return audio back. And return audio is effectively so the talent or even the cameraman can actually hear the studio and know when he's on air and whether he's off air. So that's literally simply a, an SDI connection out of the camera and you're good to go. Over the years, many different recording formats. Now, this is a card type. It's called an SYS card, which is pretty much like an old computer PC MCIA card, if you remember those. So the actual cards are just effectively a modified old uh, slot card or a PC MCIA card. Um, previously, we used to use tape, SX tape, uh, DigiBeta. There's a whole lot of other tape formats that we used even in the digital world before we were analog and then moved to digital. Uh, so even in these cameras, we're still actually only shooting a 1080, uh, not 4K. There are other cameras. The camera I was actually using to shoot this does 4K and that uses uh, a different type of card again. So there's a whole realm of different card formats for, uh, for these different cameras, these broadcast cameras. And some people ask why we still use these big cameras even though the technology has come down a lot from what uh, years ago and and sure you can use camcorders and they're quite good some of the camcorders are quite good but these are actually designed ergonomically so when they sit on your shoulder it, it's easy to actually use everything use the with just one hand in the lens and the other hand uh, controlling either the iris or the focus uh, or uh, some of the other controls. So it's it's not necessarily the the size of the camera. Um, it's sh certainly they have come down in weight a little bit, but it's more for ergonomics and also ease of use. Like you don't want to be mucking around with a lot of a lot of things, uh, especially wireless mics and and uh, muck around with fiddling around with cables these days. You just want to be able to turn it on and go, and that's uh, that's why they're used a lot in. ENG or news gathering. Um, in more production stuff, there's a bit more time to actually work out uh, shots and and spend a bit of time connecting things. So you you tend to get some of the more elaborate uh, equipment um, in in bigger productions where there's there's a bigger crew. But if just in a single person crew, you don't have the time and the luxury to muck around. And especially in these days when you're doing audio and video and sending things live, uh, the uh, the workload's already there because you've, you've also got to light things uh, and that, that also adds other complications as well. Uh, but that's effectively what uh, we use in uh, news gathering these days and it's certainly different to what it has been over the years but when it comes down to it, it's still a camera, a microphone and some kind of transmitter, be it microwave or bonded cellular networks. And that's pretty much how we do it these days. Thanks very much for watching and hope that was a little bit interesting.